Hey, hello there. Uh, let's talk about today's liquid in challenge question. Best of time to buy and sell stock with cooldown. Uh, say that uh, we have closely monitored the daily stock price change for a single stock for a number of days. Uh, and now we've been presented with a chance to take a time travel machine and go back to when it all started. And now, uh, with the knowledge about uh, how the stock price will change in the future day by day, uh, we now have a chance to make a fortune. But there is just the one side effect uh, of the time travel. Uh, there's a string attached to travel machines, um, time travel machines. That is, we can no longer trade like a normal trader. There are a specially a new set of rules applying to us in terms of trading. Uh, three things. One, uh, at any given point, uh, we can only hold one share. Second, any given day, we can only do three things. Buy a share. Uh, sell the share that we currently hold or do nothing uh, every single day we can only perform one of three things lastly there is one day cooldown before uh, between the sell event and the buy event so if we sold the stock yesterday uh, we have to rest today do nothing and tomorrow we can choose either rest or buy one more stock so that's the three rules applying to us now with that rule, uh, even stringent as it is, uh, we still have to uh, figure out a maximum, uh, a way to maximum the profit we can get. Because uh, who would lose that chance uh, if we really can travel back? So that's the problem. So let's talk about uh, the brute force solution. Uh, that's the solution that everyone can think of. That is, uh, because we are looking at a, a end day sequence of actions every single day we can do three things buy sell and rest we can just generate all those possible sequences uh, that's three to the power of n and among them are going to be a lot of invalid ones like a sell sell buy buy uh, sell and buy with no resting in between uh, or you know all sorts of uh, crazy uh, in unreasonable uh, sequence can happen uh, we can just filter those out and among all those possible uh, valid uh, sequence of actions for end days we can just evaluate them one by one and return the maximum so that's going to be a guaranteed solution to the problem the time complexity is really bad it's a 3 to the power of m multiplied by m uh, that's the uh, you know the possibility uh, the combinations multiplied by the time to invalidate and evaluate uh, so so that's the uh, brute force solution um, it's bad because uh, every single day, um, whenever, uh, whatever, what I choose to do, what kind of a state I'm uh, at, uh, if I'm holding one stock, well, if I just sold that stock for that day, or I'm, I'm taking a rest for that day, uh, I have all those possible values because there are possible different ways to getting to that day, to that state. Uh, if the brute force solution is considering all of them. But really, at any given day, if I know what kind of state I am, if I'm holding a stock or, buy, uh, or just sold one stock or just rested for that day, all I need to keep track of is the maximum profit uh, for that day of that state. So every single day, I just need to keep track of three numbers. The maximum profit if i still currently holding one. The maximum profit uh, if I just sold one stock for that day or the maximum profit uh, if for that given day I'm just resting. How I come over there, uh, what kind of path that I leads me to, to that position, or what kind of low ball profit that I can, that I can have for that day of that state, uh, those are irrelevant, irrelevant for our uh, optimization purpose. So, um, so that's one thing we can optimize. The second thing is, uh, we can avoid to generate uh, all those invalid uh, sequence uh, in the begin to begin with. Uh, so that leads us to have to think about uh, the three states and uh, how it's transitioning into the next state uh, following the three actions that we can take. Uh, if we can avoid generating all those invalid uh, sequences, uh, then it's gonna uh, you know, r remove the unnecessary part from the brute force solution. So with those, those two points, we can arrive to an optimal solution. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the three state every day and the three actions to transition from day to day. Uh, the three actions are, uh, we've we'll talked about for so many times now, buy a single share, sell a single share, and rest for that day. Uh, the three different state for the single day is, I'm 
currently holding one share at the end of that day, or I just sold my share at the end of the today, or uh, today I'm just rested so that the next day I can purchase. So that's the only three states that we have to keep track of every day. Their transition is uh, depicted by this graph here. Uh, if I'm currently holding, um, I can do two things. Either to rest, that brings me to still holding tomorrow, right? At the beginning of tomorrow. If I choose to sell this current, state, uh, current share that I have, uh, then at the end of the day, uh, I will be moved to the uh, just sold day, uh, this state. If I just sold a state, if I, I, I the, the sold state, uh, the only thing I can do by adhere the cooldown rule is to rest one day to move myself to the rested state. If I'm currently at the, the rested state, there are two actions. Uh, one is to rest one more day, so we stay here. Other thing is uh, I choose to purchase one share. So that will move me up to the hold state. So this graph shows the three different states for the day and how they transition into each other if we choose to do one of the three options. So with this, we can only gener uh, we can generate uh, a sequence that's valid. Uh, so we don't have to generate uh, invalid uh, the state. Uh, combined with the fact that for any given day, all I need to keep track of is the maximum profit uh, at the three different states. Uh, so uh, we, we can use an array to hold this. Uh, for any given day, I can hold that, uh, we, we can keep track of the maximum profit at day i if I'm at uh, one of the three possible states. And combined with the transition, uh, we can use the prior day's maximum and the, the valid transition to figure out the next day's maximum. So that's the uh, transition function here. So let's just briefly talk about that. Uh, if, if at the end of day i, I'm in the hold state, that could only be uh, from the uh, you know, two paths. That is, uh, yesterday I was ready to purchase, and today I made a purchase. That's the second turn in the maximum. Uh, the, first, uh, the first turn is that uh, um, yesterday I'm, 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 I was holding one share, and today I, keep to, uh, I choose to do nothing. I'm still holding that share. So at the end of uh, day I, if I'm still holding one share, uh, my maximum profit would, uh, would be the maximum between those two options. Uh, if I sold one share at day I, uh, my maximum can only be uh, looking at the prior day. What's the maximum if I hold one share uh, yesterday and I choose to sell it today? So that's uh, a single thing here. There's no maximum, no, no more options. Uh, it's just one arrow from sold to uh, hold to sold. Uh, if I want to figure out, figure out uh, the maximum profit of the AI, if at the end of the AI I'm in the rested state, that's going to be the maximum between two things. Uh, I rested it today, and uh, I rested yesterday, and I rested it today. That's the one possible. The other one is I sold one share yesterday, and uh, uh, for the uh, restriction, I have to rest it today. Uh, so two paths to end up uh, with this uh, rested. Uh, so my maximum is going to be the maximum between those two. So that's the uh, transition function. Uh, so with this rule and the diagram, we can code up uh, the solution. Just enumerating over day by day, every day we update the three values. And at the end of the day, uh, end of the whole end day period, uh, we just look at the, the very last entry for uh, the three things and uh, outputting the maximum from those. So that would be a linear time algorithm. And if you choose to tr store the history, then it's going to be a linear space solution. Uh, if you choose to compress it a little bit, uh, because if you look at the, the formulation here, uh, to calculating today, all you need is prior day. Uh, we can reduce the space requirement to constant. But the, the good thing about keeping track of the history, maximum pass uh, history, is that we can trace the uh, pass to get to the maximum profit. So if we, the question not only ask the maximum profit, but also ask for the uh, the strategy, the sequence of actions we do every day, uh, with this stored uh, uh, as arrays using linear space, we can get that out very easily. Uh, so that's the time and space analysis for this. Uh, 
So with that, I'm just going to code this. Instead of using three individual arrays, I'm just going to use a single array with uh, triplets on it. Uh, it's going to be hold, the maximum profit for hold, maximum profit for sold, and maximum profit for rest. Uh, and it's going to be end entries for that triplets in the, in the array. Uh, to initialize this, uh, we're gonna with put the, the initial value. Uh, for rest, it's easy zero. For hold and sell, uh, hold and sold, uh, we can look at the, the transition function later and uh, figure out the, what's the uh, what are the proper appropriate uh, initial value there. So uh, we're just gonna unpack the prior days hold, sold, and rested from the DP array. and using the transition function up there to figure out the optimal for today. So it's gonna be the maximum between the last hold and uh, uh, what if that uh, last yesterday I was resting and uh, I, I'm making a buy action today. For so it is the uh, there's just one option from yesterday's hold plus the price for today. I'm selling the stock uh, that I'm currently holding, whatever the past coming to yesterday. Uh, I don't care as long as the, my status hold yesterday. I'm just I just want that maximum and uh, adding the price stock price for today that I can sell it. Uh, so that's the sold. Rest is gonna be the maximum in between. Uh, last rest and uh, last sold. So with this, I, I'm just um, uh, I should append this new day's uh, information onto the DP. In the end, I just look at the very last entry uh, and. Uh, return the maximum among those three. So, uh, to think about this, uh, to think about the, the initial value here, for day one, uh, the maximum I can get for hold uh, should be a uh, because rest is lost the re rest in the beginning is zero. zero. This is negative price. Uh, some negative value. So I think I should start with uh, the minimum value as, as low as possible. So it's uh, just do negative infinity. And for sold, uh, we have the last hold plus some price. Uh, so so it doesn't really matter what value we put there. So, oh, for the rest, we have to take the maximum between last and rest and sold. So uh, we could just put a negative one. It should be fine. Uh, yeah. So yeah, only only last the hold has to be uh, as small as possible. But for so but for so it could be anything that's smaller than zero. That would be fine. Um, and after that, it would just be uh, updated according to the um, transition functions. And yeah, with this, um, compared to the brute force, the improvements are one. Every single day, we only keep the optimal for three different cases. Secondly, for the next day, uh, we use the valid pass, valid action to next state transition to calculating the max for the next day. So it's guaranteed it's going to be a valid pass, and also uh, we, 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 we only consider the optimal uh, day by day. So uh, that's this uh, solution. Uh, Alright, so if you want the uh, pass to get to the uh, final final uh, optimal uh, profit, we can really tr do a backtrack with this uh, three piece of information here to, to uh, re restore that uh, optimal uh, sequence of actions. Um, yeah, so that's this question today.